welcome back to another tutorial video in our series where we are going to take a look at Spring Boot together with Angular. In this video we are going to be extending our application a bit, we're going to create some entities and also a base for our entity and we are going to um, yeah, add some new uh, dependencies. As you can see I've already done that. You can see that we are now have a dependency to the Spring Boot uh, Data JPA. So this will help us when we are creating our um, entities. So we are going to get some additional annotations. And you can also see that I have a runtime uh, only. Uh, so it's for the MySQL connector so that we can connect to the database. Uh, but for now, just ignore those, um, what they do, just add them. And once you have, uh, please do click this button so to reload all the Gradle projects. With that, the dependencies will be downloaded and you should be able to see a message like this, that the build was successful. Once we have done that, we want to continue and we want to create the base for our entities. So the base is going to be like an abstract class, which will be annotated with a special annotation so that the spring doesn't create any tables for it. And this class can only be used if we extend some entity with it. So let's create a package for it and let's create a, a Java class for it. As you can see, I have created a, a class here, a distributed entity, and I'm going to make it abstract. And with that, we can continue. So what we want to do is annotate it with at mapped super class, which will tell Spring that this is just a, an abstract class that contains some base properties that will be used on the different entities. So it will not create a table for it. Great. With that being done, we want to now add some properties that we are going to be sharing in between our entities. One of those probably will be something like an ID. And we also maybe want to have uh, like a, a date time where we created an, our entity and also when we modified it. So those would be some common properties that we are going to share between our entities. So we can create them and of course later on we can extend this. So here we have our ID property, we annotate it with at ID, and we also have the strategy how we are going to create those IDs. The next one, we are going to have uh, like a local date time created and local date time modified, which will indicate when our entity was created and when our entity was modified. So here we have our two properties created and modified and they are not nullable and the, what's left now is to create getters and setters for these three properties. So with the getters and setters created we want to move on to create our uh, main entity. We are going to be creating a vehicle entity which is going to be just uh, yeah, the entity that's um, going to represent the vehicle and we're going to add some properties to it for the, for the beginning, but later on we can extend it and build upon it. So let's again do the same thing. Let's create a new Java class. Let's name it vehicle and it will also be inside of this uh, entity package. Our uh, vehicle entity will of course have the at entity annotation and it will be extending our distributed entity. So by extending the distributed entity, we are basically selling Spring to add all of those uh, properties that we created here also to this uh, entity. So that means that the table that's going to be created for the vehicle will have those properties plus in addition, whatever we add to this class. One thing that we want to add probably is a column for the vehicle number. So like something like a license plate or some number, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. So we're going to create a string property called number. Um, this column probably should uh, not be uh, empty. So we're going to set the nullable to false. Um, for now, we are not going to add much to it. We can always extend this later on, so it doesn't really matter. What we want to do also is to create the getters and setters for this uh, property. Great. With that being done, we are basically finished with our vehicle entity. Now what we want to do is we want to create some repositories. 
we want to be able to create um, a repository that can handle um, our entities but we want to create it in that way that it uh, we don't have to duplicate the code so we could create a repository for each individual entity that we have and implement all the methods from the beginning and everything but we're going to make it a bit nicer so we're going to create like a distributed repository that's going to be handling all of the entities and then special implementations for uh, special entities are going to be uh, created in their specific repository so we're just going to extend that it sounds a bit complicated but it uh, really is not so uh, what we want to do now is we want to create a package called repository and inside of it we want to create um, two classes we want to create a distributed repository interface and we also want to create our deposit the distributed repository implementation class but before we start with that, um, we need to take care of one thing, and that is uh, to actually enable the uh, JPA repositories, um, which for which we actually need to create a distributed repository impulse. So um, yeah, it sounds a bit complicated, but it really is not. So let me show what I want, what I mean. So let's create a new package. Uh, let's call it uh, something like repository. And inside of this package, let's create a new interface called uh, uh, distributed repository. So what we want to do is uh, annotate this, this with at no um, repository bean. Since this is just an interface and we're going to assign a type for it, which is going to be just our entity. And now this repository, this distributed repository, should extend the JPA repository. For the JPA repository, we also need to set uh, our entity type and also we need to set the type of our uh, ID. And the type of our ID is integer. If you want to go with something like long or string, you have to basically modify this property. So change the value here. So change the type here to whatever you want. And that's, that is something that you're going to be providing here. Okay, uh, now once we have our um, interface, we want to create an implement implementation class for it. Uh, so we are going to do it in the same, um, package so let's create a distributed repository implementation and uh, this distributed repository again we provide it with a type um, keep in mind that these are generics so we are trying to make this repository as generic as possible and then we are going to have um, separate repositories for our entities where we are going to implement it and actually provide a type. For example, for vehicle, this would be just a, a vehicle entity. So um, this will be uh, extending our, um, this will be actually be implementing our distributed repository, but also it will be extending the simple JPA repository. And the simple JPA repository, we also need to provide our entity type and we also need to provide the type of our ID. And let's implement our distributed repository. And probably not important currently, but will be in the future. We want to implement also the JPA specification executor, which will help us uh, to execute some, um, yeah, some specifications or some custom queries. We have a lot of to implement here at the beginning. So like a lot of, um, how to say, uh, base classes. But then once we have done that once, every next thing that we implement, so like every next entity that we add is going to be simpler and simpler. So we need to create a constructor. Um, now let's do that. We're going to using use this. And here, instead of um, this, the main class, we are going to actually use our um, JPA entity information yeah and that's a bit
So in this repository, we can also implement some custom specifications. For example, um, you probably saw our created and modified timestamps. We could create a specification here that would find all um, entities that have been modified since whatever time, so like something that we forward. So that would be one thing that we could do and uh, probably will probably do that and we will uh, create a bunch of methods here um, yeah, for later on. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is actually create our uh, vehicle repository. So this vehicle repository would be like really specific thing to the vehicles and it's actually quite simple. So we create a new Java class inside of our repository package. We name it a vehicle repository. And actually I made a mistake. So this will not be a class, it will be an interface. And we annotate it with at repository. So that Spring knows what it is and it will extend the distributed repository and our entity type will be vehicle and that's it we have our vehicle repository of course here we can add some specific um, vehicle specific annotation uh, um, vehicle specific um, what have I called I already forgot uh, uh, specifications yes that's what I meant so we can add them here and we can do some things like find by um, vehicle number because for example vehicle number is only on the vehicle entity and we don't have that anywhere else so that's something that we can add here and then we can implement also this repository and yeah make it nice and pretty so that's a possibility which we are probably going to be we'll probably do that sometime in the future not in this video but definitely in one of the next ones so um, with the vehicle repository created and our distributed repositories, vehicle entity and distributed entity created, all that le left to do is to enable our JPA repositories. So for that, we need a configuration class. Um, we can probably, I'm actually not sure, but yeah, we have our um, application config. We can um, use this one and uh, add, just add a notation, which is at enable APA repositories and we also have to provide a repository base class which is um, our distributed repository implementation class and yeah that's it so our uh, JPA repositories are enabled and with that we can try to connect it to our database so for that, we, we would need to um, have some, um, we need to update our, uh, what are they called, application properties. So we need to connect to the database and we also have to create a database, which I already did. So I created an empty schema. Uh, in case that you don't know how to do that, I will put a video in the description, which explains how you can get the, the workbench. So the MySQL workbench, which you can use then to create a schema and everything else that you need. And then we can connect to it. So um, if I collapse all of this that we have, so inside of our modules backend, inside of the source folder main, there is a empty resources folder. So inside of this empty resources folder, we are going to create a new file and we're going to call it application.properties. So this is a file where we can um, add some properties to our application. For example, if we want to change the server port or stuff like that, we can do that here. Or in this case, where we want to is to add some um, uh, properties regarding our database connection. So I'm going to type it out and then we are going to go through it and explain what they are. So with this being done, and uh, as you can see, I've fixed this uh, error. So I had a small typo here. So it's the 
uh, DL, not DLL. And with that being done, and once we start our application, as you can see, I have already started it, and we go to our workbench and check our schema. We, once we hit right click, refresh all, we should be able to see the tables column now filled. We have this here Hibernate sequence table, which is automatically generated, and we have our vehicle table. So if you right click on it and click uh, select rows, you should be able to see um, all that's inside of this table, which is just empty, but you can see that the columns that we have created, so like ID, created, modified, and number are there, or right click, alter table, and then you can see more information about this like data type and stuff like that and the primary key and all of that uh, nice things. So you can see that our application works. We are able to create our database, uh, so create our tables and yeah, we are ready to go uh, on the next videos. So for this one, uh, that would be everything. In the next one, we're going to take a look at more details and uh, yeah, some more exciting stuff. So stick with me. And if you have any suggestions, if there is something that you would like to see or something is not clear, do let me know and I will try to explain it as soon as I can. So uh, if you like it, like the video and subscribe to the channel for more exciting videos like this. And I will see you in the next one.